Good morning and welcome, welcome, welcome. I want to say a special shout out to Coatesville, Indiana and all you who are joining us online and away from the church. Thank you for joining us in. Send us a message on Facebook and let us know you're there. Thank you. I'm Reverend Molly McGee and you're worshiping with Horseshoe Drive United Methodist Church. And today we continue talking about God's kinfolk, the family of God that we are and how we should have the same mind that is in Christ and the same mind with each other. I'll explain that more in just a little bit. So sit back, relax, take a deep, deep breath, let everything go, and open your heart for worship of our one true God. Amen. I'm gonna keep walking, and keep talking, and keep singing. Please stand for the call to worship. A new day has dawned, a new year begun. Lord, call us so we may hear your voice. The world turns to hopes and dreams of the future. Lord, keep us in your ways and on your path. We enter this new year with hope and excitement.
You may be seated. A radium reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Now I encourage you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, agree with each other and don't be divided into rival groups. Instead, be restored with the same mind and the same purpose. My brothers and sisters, Chloe's people gave me some information about you, that you're fighting with each other. What I mean is this, that each one of you says, I belong to Paul, I belong to Apollos, I belong to Cephas, I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in Paul's name? Thank God that I didn't baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that nobody can say that you were baptized in my name. Christ didn't send me to baptize, but to preach the good news. And Christ didn't send me to preach the good news with clever words so that Christ's cross won't be emptied of its meaning. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are being destroyed, but it is the power of God for those of us who are being saved. The word of God for the people of God. Good morning. How are you? Good, because I'm about to upset everybody. <laughs> Please arise. I want everyone who's in the middle here, I want you to come at least one, preferably two rows closer, and I want you to smush in and sit by people. Yes. This front row here that's all in one extended family, I want y'all to move over there. And David, I want you to move over here. And y'all can cross in the middle, that's fine. There's purpose. I mean, I am kind of just doing it for fun, but there's purpose. Y'all don't have to move, y'all are good. I know. Yeah, speak to each other. How you doing? I know, but you're tough. You can handle it. <laughs> All right. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall. That's what our scripture and talks about, but that's also what our song just talks about. A ruler of my vision, Christ together. Let us pray. Almighty and holy God, you bring the rains today. 
protect us from too much rain, protect us from lightning and thunder, take care of us today, encourage us, strengthen us, and remind us that we are together one body, the body of Christ brought together by you, unified in our faith. Lord, bring us together. And help us carry that unity, not just in this room, but throughout the church and our community and the world. Lord, keep us open, our hearts and our minds open to the words. You are speaking to us in your presence as it moves among us wherever we worship this day. And though I am not worthy to speak for you, I ask that you use me as a vessel through which others hear you speak. In the name of our one true God. Amen. By moving around, you get a different perspective. You may not used to be sitting this close. It may be a little bit scary because I'm kind of close to you. Or you haven't sat on that side or this side. And I encourage people, when you come to church, I know you have your pew and your set, but sometimes sit somewhere else, even a row forward or to the side or to the middle or on one of the two sides that we have because it changes your perspective. You see things differently. You might see the window better or you might notice there's people sitting over here. You never maybe have looked this way or looked that way. Change your perspective. See the world from a different point of view. See your seat from a different point of view. Sit by somebody different. And if you don't know their name, even though you're supposed to and probably have heard it, Say, I'm sorry, forgive me, but what is your name? And then share your name with them. Because remember, we're all part of the body of Christ. And even though we are one church, even though we are one church, we may not know everybody. We may not know everybody because we used to have two services, and that's kind of one of the reasons that um, I don't like the two services. It's because they become two separate churches. And you forget who's there and who's that. The other reason is, unless this room is overflowing, do we need another service? Let's come together. We are the body of Christ. We can sit together for an hour and worship together. Because God has called us together. And this is what our scripture is talking about today. And it's interesting, we think of dissension and factions and cliques and division and all the fighting that goes is going on today wasn't happening in biblical times. But even Paul is at the church of Corinth and he's seeing separation. He's seeing division because there's this group, different groups, you know, the church is forming. It's not like today they don't have one pastor for a long period of time. So different groups have come in and a lot of people are being baptized. And so different groups have baptized different people. And so everyone's kind of dividing themselves according to who baptized them, their group, their family. So already it's our human nature. It is our human nature to start and say, I'm part of this group and not part of that group. We don't mean it to be negative. Oftentimes, when we tell young people, whether they're teenagers or kids or as they get into college, you'll find your group. If you feel uncomfortable in the world or you feel like no one is like you, you'll eventually grow up and you'll find your group. And that's a wonderful thing. And you need to find people who are like-minded and who accept you as you are. And sometimes it feels like that'll never happen. Hopefully that happens in church. Sometimes it doesn't. For some people, but hopefully it happens in church and hopefully we are all mindful to be loving and accepting of everyone who comes in here, even if they're different. But the other side to that of finding your group and feeling comfortable and feeling at home is you're saying, I'm this and not that. Even if you're not doing it intentionally, that's kind of what happens. Well, these people sit together, they go out to lunch together, they're friends, but I'm over here not part of that. Even if I have my group and we go out to lunch and do our thing over here, we may feel like we're not included with that group there. But we are the same church, the same body of Christ, the same kin of God in God's kingdom. And we are together because we are united by our faith, by our belief in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. That's what unites us. 
that we say every morning, I want to follow Jesus Christ today. I want to do my best to be what God has asked me to be today, a Christian. And it's a big umbrella. It is a big umbrella, and that's what Paul is talking about. And here he says, be of one mind, in our translation. But in other translations, he says, be unified and have the mind of Christ. Which I think says a little bit better. Because when you think of be of one mind, you're thinking of automatons that all think and act and dress alike. We don't want that. That's boring. Be of one mind. Have the mind of Christ. Know that there is something that brings us together and unites us in love. If we are followers of Jesus Christ, we try to be accepting of each other, of loving of each other, of, of seeing each other as human beings. And not just it or them. That we come together as the people of God. And that we know each other with love. We don't have to like each other, but we can love each other. We don't have to sit close and be cuddly with everybody, but we can respect the other person because they, like us, are followers of Jesus Christ, and they, like us, have come to church with us. And we don't have to be judgy and blame each other for their sin because, you know... (laughs) You don't want to get into that, calling out each other's sins. That could get ugly. So we accept that we're all not perfect, but that we're perfect in Christ. That we're brought together by Christ, made righteous in God's eyes. God has brought us together, so let us accept each other through that. And this group over here that goes to lunch might invite somebody from this group and vice versa. And it's okay if you don't know each other well. It's okay if... This person made you mad 20 years ago. Get over it and figure out there's something we have in common or something we can like about each other. Because that's what Paul is talking about today and how easy it is for us to be divided. How easy it is for us to separate ourselves I mean, it happened almost as soon as the Christian church began. Initially, there was one church of Jesus Christ. And then it split. Took about a thousand years for the first split. But everybody was so separated, you probably, you know, didn't have that global feeling. Took another 500 years for that to split. And then since then, we just keep splitting. How many denominations are out there? You can't name them. New ones are popping up. Some are dying off. Some are changing. As one group gets together and says, well, we agree this way, and we believe, and the other one says, well, we believe different, so they go their separate ways. It happens in businesses. It happens in families. It happens everywhere. So it happens in the church, because the church is made up of human beings, like us, who are fallible and broken, and who really need to find a group that they fit with. I mean, that's, that's impo- part of it. That's why I'm saying that this is part of who we are, because well, you do need a group that you're comfortable with. You do need a group that accepts you and loves you as you are. You need to find your clique. But don't let your kick, clique become the mean girls. Don't let your clique be divisive which I think click automatically is divisive. But we find groups that we like. We just have to remember to include other groups in, especially since we are in the church. So we have to change our perspective. We have to sit at a different place in church, and we have to sit by different people. I didn't ask you to do that yet, so that's coming one day. Don't worry. Because it matters. It matters. And I know, and I understand tradition, and I understand heritage, and you may sit in the same pew that your family sat in for 60, 75, 80, some cases 100 years, depending on the church. And I understand that. But it's also important to change your perspective and see someone else, or see the church from a different point of view, or sit with someone who's alone. 
or say, would you like me to sit by you? And they say, no, thank you, I'm fine, and that's okay too. Some people like to worship alone. You don't always have to put your, I know, but you're sitting close, it's okay. I understand, I get to sit by myself, I get it, believe me. But changing up little bits, even if it's history and tradition, changing up little bits changes our perspective. And y'all know about me by now, we have, our worship structure changes, the same, stays the same, but I change bits and pieces all the time. Mainly because that's my nature, I get tired of one thing so I have to switch it. But also it keeps us on our toes and keeps us thinking about our faith differently. Saying different words in the creed than the one we've already memorized makes us think because we can't just sit there and say it from memory, we have to think about it. Singing a different song, either an old one or a new one or one in between, makes us think about what the words are saying and makes us change our ideas and our attitudes, different styles of music. It's very easy to sit in church and say, well, I don't like that song. Okay, there's some I don't like, but we sing them and hopefully there's one or two you like in it. Or you say, I don't know that song, I don't want to sing it. That's our favorite church thing. I don't know that song, I, want to, I don't want to sing it. You got to learn something new sooner or later. Because even a song that's Praise to the Almighty that we sang today is over three or 400 years old, but it was new at some point. Somebody was sitting in that church 400 years ago going, well, I don't like that song. It's new. I don't want to learn it. So we just got to be open to change and what's new and what's coming because when we don't, we get rigid. We get rigid. And that's kind of what Paul is talking about because he says, Christ didn't call me to preach Paul. Christ taught me to preach the cross and preach about Jesus and what he means for the world. And I could do what I want, but I need to do what Christ asked me to do. Then he goes on to say, because if you don't believe in the words and you don't understand the words and you don't have any care for the words, it means nothing. It means death. That's what he's saying. If you're choosing to turn your life away from Christ, turn your life away from your faith, that means death and that you don't have eternal life through Christ. But if you stick with the words and you stick with the meaning and you stick with what Christ has for you, then you have life eternal, you have love eternal, you have hope eternal, you have peace eternal. It is life giving the word of Christ that we share in here. It is life giving. So it's not about what I want or what I think or what I prefer. It's about what Christ would have for me. What Christ has prepared for me. Think about that. Christ prepared this for us today. You may think that I had something to do with it, and Courtney had something to do with it, and Debbie had something to do with it. But Christ was leading us through it, and Christ prepared our worship today. You may not like every part of it. You may love every part of it. That's okay. It's what, what Christ would have for us today. Christ might have something for us tomorrow. But if we close down our minds and we refuse to accept what's new or we refuse to see what's out there, we might be missing Jesus. If you go in to Walmart and do your shopping, or you go into Kroger and do your shopping, and you don't look at any face in there, you just go to your shelf and grab it and keep going, which I've done plenty. But stop and look around, because you might miss Jesus there in the aisle. Or someone who's looking for Jesus might find you in the aisle. I'm often asked to get things off the high shelf. I could avoid it. I could not look at people. But it doesn't hurt me to go here. I could get mad because sometimes it's easy because you can't get your carts down the aisle and somebody's blocking it. And sometimes I just wait. Instead of saying, excuse me, I have to get through. It's okay. 
Remember that Christ is everywhere and Christ lives within us and through us. And we may be Christ for someone someday and someone else may be Christ for us even when we're not expecting it. But we have to be open to it. We have to be open to the people around us. And if you set divisions and you set barriers and you set walls, you're going to miss out on a lot. You're going to miss people. I don't want to look at them. I don't want to see them. I don't want to know them. And in this community, which is different, Alexandria is still somewhat of a small town, even though it's a city. Most of you have lived here your whole lives, and you know a lot of people, and you know their business. And so you know who this is and who this is and who this is, and you've already kind of categorized everybody, something we have to be careful of. We do it naturally. We do it naturally, but we have to be careful because we got to see each other for who we are and not what church they go to or what group they are part of or what family they are part of because we're all different and we all have value and we all have good in us and we all have not so good in us. But how do we love each other and how do we accept each other and how do we see each other outside of our groupings and our cliques and our factions and our divisions? I have the same mind as Christ, which is hard, which is very hard. Jesus loved. Jesus welcomed. Jesus ate with the people no one else wanted to be around. Jesus got down with the dirty folks more than the clean folks. Have the same mind as Christ. Have the same mind as Christ. You know our denomination's going through a battle. I'm not going to go into that. You know that. If you don't know that, come and talk to me. We'll, we'll talk about it. But someone from church recently asked me about it. And I said, I'm doing my best throughout all of this to see both sides I may not agree with both sides. I may not agree with either side some days, and I may agree with different things, but I'm trying to see both sides and hold them with value. And that's hard. I have struggled in the last year trying to do that. I made a commitment for myself to do that. And I have struggled because when I see things that have happened, it makes me mad. Or it hurts my feelings in some cases. And I have to find that place again. Both sides, there are people. Both sides have good people. Both sides have broken people. And both sides are going to eventually go their separate ways, and that's okay. But can we hold love for each other in the meantime? That's tough. It's tough. But that's what having the mind of Christ, I believe, what that means looking out at someone who sees the world differently than you, who accepts some people or doesn't accept other people differently than you, who chooses one political party over another political party or other than you. It is so easy to vilify the other instead of just saying, there are people just like me who are worthy of love and worthy of hope and worthy of peace and I need to love them, even though we disagree. Even though we disagree. And we're in a dangerous time. We're in a dangerous time. And I'm going to use Patty as an example. She's very dangerous, by the way. But when I arrived here, she asked my opinion on something related to the church and the world around us. And a few years ago, 10 years ago, I would have said what I thought, no problem. But on that day, I said, I'll tell you if you want to know. But I need to know that by you asking and me telling you, is that going to change your opinion of me? Or change the way you treat me? Or change what you tell other people about me? And she said, no, I just, I want to know. So we had a nice little conversation. But I've been in those conversations in the last few years where it has changed people's thoughts about me 
and people's attitudes about me and what people told other people about me. Now, I know everybody talks about me. That's fine. And I know not everyone is just saying glowing, wonderful things all the time, although I can't imagine how you find anything else to say. But um, sometimes it matters what people are saying. And it affects our lives in different ways that we don't always recognize. So how are we, as the people of God, the church of Jesus Christ, God's family, how are we looking at other members of God's family and seeing them for who they are and loving them for who they are? Now remember, loving doesn't mean you have to give them a big wet kiss and invite them to come live with you. Loving means I respect you, through your opinions, and who you are. And if there's a bus coming, I'd push you out of the way. Or at least yell, bus, something. It just means having care for another person as a hum fellow human being just like us. Because that's really what having the same mind of Christ means. What Paul is talking about, it didn't matter who baptized you. You're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. We are one in Christ. And what we have in common is our faith and belief in Jesus Christ. Even if we believe differently about that, even if we interpret it differently, even if we live it out differently, it is what unites us. So we come to each other with love, we come to each other with grace, and we come to each other saying, I know we disagree. I know I haven't spoken to you in 25 years since that meeting that day at church. But I love you as you are. And maybe we can have another meeting. Not on the same topic, but maybe we can go to another meeting and get along. Be civil to each other. <laughs> maybe we can sit next to each other in church and worship together. See what happens. Take it slow. If we have the same mind of Christ, we are forgiving of each other. Even knowing that if you forgive me today, I might do the same thing tomorrow. And you have to forgive me again. That's hard. But that's having the same mind of Christ. And being together as the body of Christ, being the church of Jesus Christ, being part of Horseshoe Drive United Methodist Church. We need to be unified, and we are for the most part. I'm not saying we're not. I hope not. If you're now with something, let me know. But working past that that divides us, that that separates us, that that disconnects us, and coming together as one. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the sake of Jesus Christ, because we intend to follow Jesus Christ, whether it kills us or not. We're going to work to do our best to follow Jesus. And if it means I have to sit on a different pew on Sunday, I can do that sometimes. Can, can, no, anybody? I'm, gonna, I'm not getting a lot of nods, but okay. We're getting, or I'm going to try to see the worship space, the sanctuary from a different point of view. I mean, even if you don't want to sing, I'll let you sit up there on the corner just to see what they see. It's a whole other world up here, believe me looking at y'all and that's okay because we are together as the body of Christ brought together to worship God in a space created by God in a time set apart by God for this Christ prepared this for us today and brought us here brought us here today for that reason and it's put us in this world at this time of divisiveness and craziness for a reason, for this time. Although I think I could have said that at any point in history and said, for this time of divisiveness and craziness, and it would have worked. But we're here together now to do the work of Christ as the body of Christ for the sake of Christ. And we can do that together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
we have our creed first. Thank you very much. Please join me in the creed. This is the creed from the Korean church. It's in our hymnal, but we have it on the screen. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new. We trust God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek Jesus and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope in life and death and life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with a time of prayer. We'll begin with a moment of silence and then we'll carry through as we follow along in prayer. Let us pray.
God of unity, we come before you dismayed at our own divisions. We have struggled as your church to live in unity, but as your family, we are divided. The ruptures in our families, among friends, among denominations, among nations are wide and deep. God help us. We know that Christ is not divided. We know that it is your baptism to which we have been called. It is your service to which we are You have called us to proclaim the gospel, but we even fight about what that is. Help us to yield for the sake and cause of the cross of Jesus. Help us to embrace and to live a life emptied of power and given to service in the likeness of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Help us walk in salvation in the name of the servant Christ. Amen. And together let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught our Father. Will the ushers please come forward? Let us pray. Almighty and holy God, you unify us, you bring us together, and we honor for you for that, and we thank you for that, and we ask you, as we make this offering today, that you bless it, that it comes fully from within us, our gifts, our treasures, we give to you for the sake of your people in your world. In Jesus' name, amen.
that's how they'll know us when we love. Our new bishop, D. Williamston, is in town today, and I know there's football and rain. Championship Sunday. <laughs> Sorry, Bishop Sunday. Um, but no, this is a unique thing. I don't think bishops have done this before. She's going to every district. She's in our district today. There's a reception starting at 4.30 and then a, a special session for the laity for all of you at 5.30. If you get a chance, do come and hear her. I know that yesterday Hal and Connie were part of a group of laity from all over the conference who were part of the ladies' onboarding of our bishop. I mean, they're big time. I didn't get invited to that. They are big time. So if you want to know more of that, talk to Hal and Connie after church, because that, I want to know too. Um, and Patty has something to tell us about. Okay, so just one more reminder. Um, this is the last Tuesday is our, where we're taking our last orders for the chocolate-covered uh, strawberries. If you want an order form, please raise your hand and we'll have someone bring it to you. If you want to go online and send it to the church, you can do that as well. You can also give through your, um, the app that the church gives to. So please remember the supports us for our youth trips and, and other things that we do. We thank you very much. All right, UMW Bake Sale next Sunday too, so bring some cash with you so you can have something good to eat. All right, all right. They'll know we are Christians by our love. That just says it all, and that's who unites us. So let us be united. Go today in faith, go in love, and go let the world know who you are. Amen. Amen.